We're back here at the Canadian Light Source on the U of S campus, and it's time to answer the age-old question that's been around since 1947. What's a beamline? Yes, we talk a lot about beamlines. So I thought today we would uh, get into a little more detail of what a beamline is. Um, here, what we can see is one example of a beamline. It's our BioXS beamline. You see the particle accelerator, uh, where the electrons are whizzing around at the speed of light. And at some point, those, some of those electrons are bent by powerful magnets. They create a beam of light, and that beam of light passes down uh, inside the beamline, eventually to where people are doing experiments. And uh, there's a lot of cool components inside one of these things. Yeah, all I've seen so far is a lot of stuff I don't understand, and I can't wait to not understand some more. Let's go <laughs> check it out, shall we, Tom? Sure, Kevin. There's a lot going on in here, Tom. Absolutely. We're inside one of our new beam lines, actually a beam line that's under construction. It's called the BioXCS beam line. And we're getting to see some of the really cool components that, that make up a beam line. Okay, so what are some of the basics that I don't know right now? Well, light is being generated by, the, uh, by our accelerator. It's passing down a tube here. And these components you see here, uh, this is called a monochromator. Uh, the monochromator, the role there is to choose the, the particular energy of the light that we want to use. Uh, this is a mirror tank. It focuses the beam down to a really small spot size. Uh, and then a component here filters out some, uh, uh, some of the energy of the beam, and then it'll pass on to where we actually do the experiments. Okay, so how small are we talking here? How small can you make this light? Well, uh, in this particular beam line, we're going to focus that beam down to uh, 10 to 100 times smaller than the, di the diameter of a human hair. So, not visible to people? Uh, no, basically the idea is to use a small beam uh, to do uh, microscopy with synchrotron light. Okay, and so these synchrotrons, you have a dozen of them, are they all the exact same as this guy? Um, well, each, each beam line is, is unique. Um, I like to describe a beam line as like a Formula One race car. Uh, it's not something you would buy like from a Ford dealership. Uh, it's designed, uh, the experts here at the Canadian Light Source, they, they do design. And we're trying to push the limits of technology each time. So each of these components we design, we order, and we buy it from the best manufacturers in the world. Uh, this monochromator, for example, comes from California. Uh, this mirror tank is, is built by a company in Burlington, Ontario, that specializes in those things. And inside the mirror, it's a really uh, difficult technology. The mirrors may come from Germany or, or Japan. Wow. So because they're all different, they have different demands. Yes, each, each beam line is here to do a particular type of experiment. The BioXAS beam line is basically uh, being designed for people doing biological sciences, looking for things like uh, uh, metals inside um, living systems. Wow. So, is there anything else that I should probably know about these bad boys? Uh, no, it just uh, from, from here, this, th this is the part of the beam line that you normally wouldn't see. The door would be closed when we would be operating. Uh, all, everyone would be protected by the radiation coming through here. And eventually the beam of light goes through, and that's where people uh, would do the final experiments, is beyond that wall. Well, Tom, thank you very much for having me by. Um, I don't think I learned about this in grade 9 physics. So well, thank you very much for showing it off for me today. Pleasure to have you here, Kevin.